Welcome to the Automation Car Design Competition. Over 450 entries, 11 categories and Mr. Regular as a guest judge in his very own special category. At the end, there can only be one to claim victory in the category. Now we're ready to look at the car itself in automation. Now does this match this? Color's different, but maybe that was just a trick of your lighting. Wheels are the same. We don't really see the rear of the car, so we get to look at it is that 80s style. Look at that wing. A bit high, right? In the 80s, now did I catch that in your ad? Your ad was like there, maybe I didn't quite see. Oh, there's your wing. Looks smaller. Well, oh, no. from that angle, it's the same size. I can't really fault you for that. Um, that wing is kind of 90s, though. Bit high. Oh, a bit Italian, and you, you're going for like a Mitsubishi Starion here. Now, that is... These are generous figures for the 80s. Yeah, okay. I mean, this is like Italian-esque going on here. I get it while you did it. You want this thing to haul ass, which it will. Yeah, all the proportions are freaking correct. Now, if I would make a car, would I put a twin turbo V8 in one of these things? Yes. Would it have something like this in real life back then? No. It would have a four cylinder. It would have a straight four with honestly a, a tiny turbo in it. You know, 80s cars weren't that powerful and you made something that freaking rips. You gotta remember that the Dodge Viper made 400 horsepower and everybody thought that was way too much and unbelievable. And here you're going for a period correct 80s, horse, 80s car make it 400 horse. So that's not really period correct, although the car looks the part of being an 80s car. So we got zero to five as, as, as for well, this is, gosh, you're trying to wow me. This is everything, everything is beautiful. And everything. That's the thing about automation. Everything looks great when you put it in there. Uh, so you erred on the side of it's just too good. But at least you kept the displacement correct. Wait, what is your displacement? Oh, yep, four, six. That's... That's all right. It's just they wouldn't have done a V8. It's a three, man. It's a three. Here we have a Chrysler Pacifica. Even got the uh, you what plate, you what mate. This is the 80s Chrysler ad. So all the best things in life will not be dawdling about. This weird kind of awkward sentence. By the time you're feeling this, it'll be gone. Something, something turbo. Okay. So... Is this correct? I'm really, all you gave me to go on is, is this a turbocharged engine? So you erred on the side of safety. So there's not much for me to go over as far as is this correct or not. Is there a turbo? Uh-oh. Oh, I'm not seeing, oh, there it is. Oh, it just didn't show it on the headers. Oh, in the engine bay, we didn't see it, but here you go. This is a straight six. Interesting that a crossover vehicle would have a straight six turbo. I mean, who doesn't like a straight six turbo with, uh, I mean, who doesn't like that? But would a mom van have that? Maybe it could be a special edition, kind of like the turbo uh, Chrysler PT Cruiser. So if this was were period correct of like a early 90s thing, you wouldn't have anything this sexy going on under the hood. Wait, this is going to be rear wheel drive, isn't it? Again, it could be a special edition and they could have a version of it in a very, what, what was that car from the UK? The Rover, the Rover 75 came both as front and rear drive. So you could have something in here with a transverse four or a transverse V6 that makes 150 horsepower. But here you had something sexy. So you did what a, a very conscientious student would do. You would just say that it's a turbo and it is a turbo.
I think for period correctness, though, it, it wouldn't really have on a Chrysler Pacifica design. It wouldn't have that. So you are getting a 4 out of 5 in this category. 486 horsepower? Man, <laughs> Redline 7008. Uh, three. <laughs> this is nuts for an early 90s with more horsepower than a Viper. See, that's the thing. You think you're gonna, you think you're gonna do good by making a, a very punchy engine, but no soccer mom would ever buy something this expensive. Ah, uh, three out of five, man. I like your thinking. It'd be a fun thing, but in the case of automation, where you actually have to sell the freaking car, who's gonna buy this? Only a few weirdos. And those weirdos are all going to bunch together at the car show because only my people understand me in my turbo Chrysler Pacifica. Oh, well. There but the grace of God go I. Three out of five. Okay, we're here at the Arrow. Man, pick the same font theme, please. This is a sexy kind of NSX before NSX late 80s god everything's freaking correct about this god i love it um so does this do what you said it's going to do zero to 60 miles an hour 6.8 second 12 miles per gallon 142 horsepower 125 miles an hour nice mediocre but still fun so what's under here is it gonna be good 400 141 horsepower is that right 141.9 what did you say 142. Nice. You you did just that little bit of lying that a real car ad would do. Close enough. All right. What's under? Oh. You rear engine son of a bitch. Not. Yep. Good. Transverse. Let's see, uh, let's go to the engine and see if actually you put a turbo on this thing. Fuel system, turbocharger, multi-point, EFI. That better be a teeny weeny itty bitty turbo on there. Oh, look at that thing. It's almost the same size as your, look how teeny weeny. That's correct. They used tiny, tiny little turbos back then. I got no complaints here. Honestly, if you really wanted to have fun, it would be a two valve. But, you know, well, what? AW11s were four valve, stuff like that. Now, direct acting cam. Interesting. Go. Oh. Did AW11s and stuff have direct acting cams? You know, and shim buckets right there. Did they do that? I mean, well, my GS500 motorcycle in 89 motorcycle had direct acting cams, so yeah. What do we else do we got to look at? I'm making sure these brakes aren't too big. Not too big, a little bit big. Usually back then they had little dinky winky little things in there. Um, double A arms in the front. Urgh. See, they kind of cheaped out back in the day. Again, a little bit of case of too good, too goodness, but I'm glad the motor is, is nice and it's just a perfect amount of weakness. Almost like a Mitsubishi FTO. So, compression 8.7 to 1. Nice. Did I miss anything here from the ad? You talked really about nothing but suspension and stuff. How did you get an interior of this? Are they doing interiors now? All right, my producer says at this point there's not interiors, so where did you get that and how did you make that look so well? Man, that is, that is good. You had me fooled, and that's brilliant sport. Um, the only thing I'd really nitpick on is that direct acting cam, but I sort of made the mis excuse for myself. As far as being correct, man, this is a 10, or sorry, not 10, this is a five, because it's zero to five. Very good. Oh, I'm being pointed out that this this matches. This matches Arrow. I was wrong in my initial assessment. I couldn't see that Arrow, the font was correct on the car. Very good. So do I have to go back in the original one and, and say the same thing? Well, that was really the ad itself. 
Yeah, my producer is nodding. Still, five out of five for this category. Beautiful. Here we are, 90s GM. You built a Silverado. So, the all new powerful 5.7 liter Warrior V8. Now, the, the LS didn't appear in the US until 1996. But this face went on until well into the 2000s. So, but this is like late 90s, so. Anyway, but did you say what you said it uh, would be? Five points, yeah. The 90 degree V8. So, if you went for an LT, that would be correct-er. But wait, they didn't use LTs. No. Okay, this is clearly an LS. Because this is a modern overhead valve. So you wouldn't have had headers like these. None of the LS would have tubular headers. It would have a manifold. Now, they're kind of tubular on a stock LS. And, and maybe you did this, but... If you wanted to be damn perfect, it, it would just have manifolds. Even though the LS manifolds are kind of tubular. But I guess... Uh, 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 342 horsepower at 500. Yeah, yeah, all right. They would make these 350, 350, 350. Yeah, that would do it. They, they would make that. 400 is easy without a turbo. Yeah. I mean, typically they don't... Uh, LSs uh, of these era don't... Uh, the ECUs in real life don't allow full fueling unless these parameters are met. And I know this from Sloppy Mechanics when he went through the uh, um, ECU. On a lot of these Silverados, the only parameter the only parameter that allows full fueling is the throttle being held 90% uh, or higher for 60 seconds. It must maintain that. It's, it's the idea if you're towing something and then it'll give you full fueling. But you go right in there with HP tuner software and put that parameter to zero. Like, give me full fueling at all times when I ask for it. Anyway, going back to the car, you did everything you said it would. Again, these wheels are a little bit rally stuff. Uh, let's look underneath. Solid live axle. Good. I better not see double A arms up front. Good. Uh, did they do solid axles or did they do McPherson's? Well, if it would be those four-wheel drives, it would. Um, is this a four-wheel drive system in here? Where am I looking to see if it is? Four-wheel drive. Rear-wheel drive, light truck, very nice. But I don't know if those light trucks, rear-wheel drives, we've got the LS. Uh, where's Matt Happel when you need him? Anyway. Oh, those taillights. They're a bit European. American trucks don't have amber taillights. Now, is there an option? Or if, if, if it would, it would have flatter ones. This is a four out of five. Yeah, I'm just calling it for those taillights, man. Just calling it on those taillights. That is not General Motors right there. Oh, well. That's something that some truck bro does to his thing. Four out of five. You've arrived at my dissection of this. So, what do we got? ABS braking system. So we're gonna look at a five liter V8. Does it have ABS? Does it do seven section, seven section, seven sections? Seven seconds at 140 miles an hour. So, our engine size. Instantly, a little bit over five liters, but fine, that's what it said. Um, power, 300 foot conservative, good. Um, does it have ABS braking? Uh, advanced 80s. Yep, ABS. Uh, 143. Okay. And 0 to 100 in 7.14 seconds. They said 7 seconds even. And yeah, an ad like that would lie. A little bit white. Oh, that's 0 to 62. It's 7 seconds. My apologies, because I'm looking at a 0 to 100. It's really 0. Um, 62 so yeah we'll give you that we'll give you it very good so going back to car does the butt of this car look like a Bentley 
Oh, moment of truth. A little bit Toyota Crown I'm seeing here. Now, I, 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 like, the, I like the cuts in there. That's very 80s. The tail lights wouldn't be clear in the 80s. They would be amber. And some Bentleys for the US market would have them be just pulsing red. It would be red across there. We talked about the, you didn't say much about the engine other than that it's a five liter V8. Interesting throttle body fuel injection. That's full of GM. But you made no claim about whether it was or wasn't. And as far as what Bentley was doing, I think they were a little bit archaic in that. If this was, you know, something else, what was Bentley? Were they sourcing their engines in the 80s from General Motors or something else? But that is 80s. I mean, everybody, everybody loves throttle body, just fuel injection. Welcome to the future. Honestly, I'd expect here to see single jingles. Not double cams, but there were some double cams in the 80s. Um, gosh, those taillights. It's going to be a four out of five on this. I mean, they're all great. There's no glaring stuff going on. Other than I guess you were going for an overhead valve thing. Eh, still good. Four out of five. Check with my producer if I'm missing anything. Nope. He says I'm good. Very nice. Still four out of five. Oh, now we've arrived. <sighs> Missile inbound. Let's be honest. Okay. Five-speed manual, 197 horsepower, turbo engine. That's what you're giving me to work with. Five-speed manual. Does it have that? 197 horsepower. Does it have that? Turbo engine. 197 horsepower. Uh, transmission. Five-speed manual. That's correct. We have... 6.2 seconds to 60. So test track. Six point. Yep. Yeah. Ah. Okay. It's faster than what you said. Oh no! It went too good. 6.2 seconds to 60. I get what you're doing. I mean, zero to 100. Now it's even faster. It's almost six dead. So. Uh, gosh darn it. It is an error in it. I like you so much, but I can't play favorites because the ad was perfect. And, uh, and you did it correctly. You cheaped out with a single overhead cam and an iron block. Mm. Oh wait, it is four valves per cylinder on a single jingle. Maybe, maybe you had to do this to hit that 197. But you did it with an iron block, you did it with a single cam, and you did it with rockers. It's not a direct act. Well, I guess you can't do this. Direct acting is impossible. Look at them. Roller rockers. Or, nope, roller tip. I really hope you win this. Oh, I don't want to play favorites. See, I kind of wanted to just give this five out of five. But since you backed off, it's... It's, it's gonna be a four out of five, man. It's gonna be a four out of five because it wasn't actually directly perfect. Ooh. Would these things really have double A arms in the front? In the 80s, you cheaped out in the, oh, double A arms in the back. It would probably just have McPherson's because even, even the uh, AW11 had McPherson's. Four out of five, man. I, I'm sorry that no one got a five out of five for direct correctness, but I'm being asked to be perfect. So again, four out of five. 